even in the dust. But I have the heart and valor of a king. Not Spain, nor any prince of Europe shall dare to invade the borders of my realm. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to review the Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue. And I have to say a massive thank you to Jonathan um, who has lent this watch in so graciously. And it was through my good friend Derek at Moya Jewelers in Indiana. As you guys know, I'm a, a big customer of theirs. Uh, they buy and sell and they are an um, authorized dealer for many prestigious brands. Uh, so Derek reached out to me and he said, oh, um, I've got the new Tudor, uh, fan of the channel, uh, would love to lend it. Because I did mention I would, I would like to cover Tudor and, and I've got to be completely honest, I, I had no idea they had even released a blue version of the 58. Uh, the 58 was on my to-do list uh, ever since it came out, just so many watches, so little time, um, as the cliche goes. And part of the main reason why I wasn't really aware of this new release is, well, as you've probably seen or you probably know from my channel, um, I'm a big fan of the Tudor Submariner, the um, the original, uh, the pre-Black Bay, the pre-rejuvenization uh, of the Tudor brand, and here it is. And I've owned this for over a year now, still chuffed to bits, and we'll get into uh, um, the reasons. I, I've been a, a, a fan of Tudor, I've owned God, I can't even um, count now, but I'm probably half a dozen Tudors now, and this is my current Tudor, uh, the Submariner here, in 40 millimeters. I'll put the reference number, I can never remember it, but uh, yeah, this is the quintessential uh, Submariner from Tudor. And before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Casio. This is the Mission Impossible I also recently reviewed. Cannot take this thing off. This has slowly become my favorite Casio. It's just so cool. Um, really practical. I love all the complications, the way it's laid out. And on top of that, a very cool story behind it as well. Anyway, let's get into the history. As many of you know, Tudor was the creation of the founder of Rolex. Anglophile Hans Wilsdorf founded it not so soon after its bigger brother in 1926 and named it after the British royal dynasty. Originally intended as an affordable alternative to Rolex, many of the key defining technologies like the oyster water resistant case and Rolex signed components would be included, but with outsourced movements to keep costs down. This practice would continue well into the 20th century. My current Tudor Submariner 79090 is a perfect example of this with its ETA 2824-2 movement inside and the Rolex signed oyster case and signed screw down crown. If you saw one of my older videos on underrated Tudor watches, it's clear that the brand soon started to forge its own range of distinctive models while simultaneously still providing more economical options of Rolex classics like Day Dates, which then morphed into the later Glamour and now the Royal watches. Their versions of the Explorer with the Ranger, uh, their own interpretation of the classic Rolex Datejust with the Prince Dates, um, and of course, their Prince Date chronographs instead of Rolex's quintessential Daytona. And naturally, of course, some Mariners as well. The best example is the brand trying new things, in case you missed my earlier video on um, underrated Tudor watches, is without a doubt the 1957 Advisor, the first watch featuring an alarm complication. Another watch is the Tudor Oyster Thin from the same year that featured an oyster water resistant case, only an astounding six millimeters tall. Or perhaps the greatest watch unlike Rolex was the 1976 Monte Carlo. As the name suggests, it's a racing chronograph with vivid colors and bold styling that very much forged a legacy and cult following of its own and made it more of a rival than a mere alternative to the Rolex Daytona. 
However, it is the Black Bay and all its now seemingly endless variations that have truly carried the brand into being a powerhouse in its own right. As chronicled in detail many times on the channel, its origins lie in the Tudor Submariners that date back all the way to 1954, the same year we saw the birth of the Rolex Sub. This evolution would span half a century and parallel its Rolex cousin closely in the early stages, but unlike Rolex, its culmination would be the creation of two spin-off collections, one being the ultimate expression of a modern tool watch with the Pelagos, and the second, the vintage-inspired Black Bay, both introduced in 2012. But we are skipping ahead here. Let's rewind to the most defining moment of Tudor and its lineage, an era that has forever made Tudor divers legendary. In 1964, the no-date Tudor Submariner reference 7928, which I've also reviewed, was issued to the US Navy. This would usher in a new era of Tudor supplying military forces around the world, eventually leading to its most famous and long-standing collaboration with France's Marine Nationale that lasted from the 60s all the way until the 1980s. In fact, many were not aware that with the very first Tudor subs, the French Navy was involved in field research to test them as diving watches. This real-world testing resulted in the Tudor sub gaining one of its most unique characteristics, the snowflake handset and squared markers in 1969 with the reference 7016. The purpose of this dramatic change was simple, larger and bolder shapes to make it more effective in low light by increasing the surface area, therefore more luminescent, and of course being more legible at a quick glance. This is not only a brave breakaway from the Rolex mold, but a perfect example of Tudor's more daring, unconventional approach and willingness to try new things. The largely overlooked Hydronaut divers from 1999, for example, or the reissued and unusual P01 Black Bay from 2019 are further examples. This risky mindset has had its fair shares of hits and misses along the way, but ultimately it has helped Tudor break away from the Rolex shadow and eventually create a strong identity of its own. This way of thinking and different approach compared to the more conventional and safer ways of Rolex is deeply linked to the brand's name. And again, another important point, which fans often forget when discussing this brand. So why the Tudor royal dynasty in particular? Well, they are famous for many things, including Henry VIII and his six wives, the exploration of America and the plays of William Shakespeare, of course. But during the 16th century, England emerged from the medieval world, and it was a great time of change, most notably as a rising power in Europe especially under the last monarch of the Tudor family, Queen Elizabeth I, who made England richer than ever before. The Tudor family, who always dared to be different, ruled for a collective 118 years, and the culmination of which was setting England on a path of expansion, enlightenment and conquest that would change the world as we know it in the following centuries. Tudor used the Rolex water-resistant oyster case as the backbone for the Tudor brand to much success and even earlier claim, and this was from the very start. In a similar fashion, the Tudor dynasty also began the great English seafaring tradition, another fitting nautical connection between the brand and British history. As always, let's get the dimensions out of the way. The diameter is shy of 39 millimeters, in fact. And I have to say the, the bezel is flush with the case. The height is 11.6 millimeters, a really nice slenderness there. Lug to lug, we're looking at 47.1. And the lug width is 20 millimeters. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's got, it's got some of the best dimensions uh, you could possibly ask for in a contemporary vintage inspired watch. So let's get the weight in there quickly. Let's see, let's zero it. Yep, there we go. Now I'll add the extra links that I took out just to get it more precise. Yeah, 100, 134 grams there, which is to be expected. A decent weight, not too heavy, not too light. In terms of materials, well, you have your standard uh, stainless steel, not the special steel of Rolex, but uh, nevertheless, it is done exquisitely well. I have to say the finishing and everything. We have quite a flat uh, oyster case. Uh, the crystal is a domed sapphire crystal, uh, a lot less boxy than your vintage sub, as you can see there. It's a, it's a nicely, gently 
slope up unidirectional uh, 60 click bezel and I have to say it feels very very solid indeed lines up perfectly the insert is aluminium now this particular version then you can get it on a um, slightly for less on this very very beautifully made fabric strap but this one comes on an oyster style uh, bracelet with a fold over clasp I'm going to return to this later on because uh, we should discuss it little trigger there for the lock there very nice so inside is the new uh, automatic uh, in-house manufactured caliber MT5402. This is actually Tudor's second family of um, proprietary movements. And it was released three years after the introduction of its first in-house caliber. And it is COSC certified, which is just fantastic. It does have a very tooltastic sparse look uh, with its sandblasted and laser etched finishing. Uh, it's bi-directional, has an open work rotor, uh, so it's kind of semi skeletonized There is no exhibition case back, just your standard screw-in case back. Very faithful to the Rolex Tudor tradition. Uh, but what is fantastic about this particular movement, aside from its uh, accuracy, is it has a 70-hour power reserve, making it a great everyday watch that you can take off for the weekend, and it will still be going on Monday. I just love it when a watch has that. And they haven't sacrificed the frequency either. It's still got the super smooth 28,800 vibrations an hour. The Rolex influence is extremely strong here. And if you look at the structure, it has been designed specifically to ensure robustness and reliability by having a variable inertia balance, uh, which is maintained by a more sturdy uh, traversing bridge with a two point fixation. And I must say, when you unscrew the unguarded crown, it does have a very pleasingly uh, reassuring quality feel to the manual wind. And of course, if we pull it all the way out, you'll see we have hacking as well. What I do like about the thick collared crown here on the Tudor Black Base is there's very little wobble, extremely reassuringly sturdy. The case itself is quite bold. We do have uh, lovely beveled high polished edges, high polish on the side, and then we have satin finish pretty much everywhere else. And I think the standards of manufacturing um, have not changed. I mean, I owned one of the first generations of Black Bays. As you guys know, I'm a huge Tudor fan. I, I was into Tudor before the brand had its relaunch in, when was it, 2013 or something around then? But, you know, I, I jumped on the bandwagon. Unfortunately, they were too large at the time and the honeymoon kind of fell apart. And I had an inkling they would always go smaller. Well, I hoped, uh, and that's actually why I went to the vintage uh, subs they had the 36 was an absolute bargain on the used market um, and i never looked back and hence why i didn't even know this was released until like a week ago um, and i'm recording this uh, in september by the way i believe this came out when was it uh, sometime in the summer who knows anyway so i can attest to the quality has definitely been consistent compared to uh, the, the initial release of the very first generation the c3 luminova is impeccable not quite rolex chromolite standards um, in my opinion but the orientation is outstanding because love or loathe the snowflake hands they're easy to differentiate the hours from minutes and seconds it's very very effective um, and just as the, their divisive design was initially intended to be the lack of date also does give it a very clean pleasing symmetry a great balance which again kind of not just stylistically makes it more uh, pleasing but also boosts that orientation in low light and while we're on the subject of um, hands I, I gotta say I like them I think the way they reach right to the end I mean if you just look at my sub there it's unequivocally easier to read the, the snowflake hands are more efficient that's just the truth look at the way the second hand really reaches um, i even like the more pronounced way they are stacked in the center uh, compared to my old sub um, these almost look undersized in comparison and in terms of the actual links they are of course screwed links uh, the manufacturing on everything is absolutely tip top so hats off there So let's start off with the most imperative difference with this new version, the blue. 
Now, it's neither the softened matte royal blue of the Pelagos, nor is it the more vivid Persian glossy blue of the vintage subs. It's more of um, an admiral blue, I would say, uh, giving it a very understated look, which I actually have to say I really approve of. It tends to clash less with other colors. Uh, it actually reminds me of the first Aquis I owned all those moons ago. Um, the lack of big crown guard and the oversized crown itself, which is inspired by the 1958 Tudor 7924, is a very fitting reference to draw inspiration from, and you know, hence the name, of course. But it was crucial to the history of Tudor because it was their first 200 meter rated reference. Uh, in the Tudor subs history. Now gone is the red triangle and the gilt printing of course that we saw in the black that um, obviously drew inspiration from the first generation of subs. They've gone for the post 69 shield logo uh, which is echoed in the clasp and I love this. This is a really nifty, see the fold over there? See how they've uh, included the, the heraldic shield there? Very cool indeed. And actually it's, it's quite practical as well. And talking of heraldry, uh, the only time we actually see the Tudor rose is on that beautiful relief on the signed crown there. A nice touch, uh, the rose within the rose of course, which is a lovely nod to um, its British history and of course the brand's heritage. In terms of the dial layout, um, this is unequivocally taken from the first generations of uh, subs from the late 50s. The minute track and the shape of the markers is essentially unchanged from those early references. However, it is modernized by having the markers um, applied and framed rather than simply printed. The first tutor to do this was of course the last gen subs from 1995 that I previously owned the highly underrated 79190. However, the printing color is a dulled grayish silver, very much like the reference 7928 from uh, 1964. So you begin to see that the Black Bay pulls styles and um, influences from almost every era of Tudor Sub. This eclectic mix is then combined with perhaps its most puzzling uh, little style trait. And this element is seldom talked about, surprisingly nobody ever mentions it, but gone is the semi-circular indentations on the bezel edge in favour of this coin edge, uh, which if you look at the history, well if you know the history of Tudor subs, they never had coin edges and it's uh, an unusual decision. The only thing I can conclude is that it's a perhaps an ode to the Blanc Pant 50 Fathoms, the progenitor of all modern dive watches, or perhaps even the later 1957 Super Ocean by Breitling. In fact, Squire also used um, this bezel edge in the early 1960s watches they made for Blanc Pant as well. So a lot of um, divers of that era had it. Did they do this deliberately to, to kind of underline its vintage, uh, its general vintage aesthetics, who knows? Now the classic Submariner had combinations of triangles um, and circles, um, but then when the snowflake came in, for example with the reference 94010, we had rectangles instead, which obviously complemented the snowflake hands far better. And it's a shame they didn't go with triangles as well, because this combination of triangles is the only thing you can really help distinguish a Tudor sub from a distance, uh, aside from the branding of course, to your Rolex. There wasn't really that many uh, aesthetic differences in the non-snowflake versions. It's a shame they, they went with the more Rolex layout, but anyway, I guess we're getting into negatives territory. So let's start with the positives. Well, in my opinion, this is the watch enthusiasts um, Rolex, or you could say the contrarian Rolex, if you will. When you see this in the wild, uh, you know the person is either into watches or just has great taste. I mean, you know, it's pretty obvious. Naturally, performance wise, and aside from a few minor issues, it's outstanding. Uh, while not Omega Metas levels, it does compete with any Rolex 
on the accuracy front. Proportionally speaking, it is absolute perfection. Um, I love the scale of everything. It's extremely comfortable. Uh, it is also relatively thin, so you can wear it for more formal attire. Um, yes, I know it's a faux pas, but we've had that discussion a million times. It's a really pleasing blend of elegance and practicality at the end of the day. For once, I don't have to complain about oversizing. Uh, even if it's taken half, day, <laughs> half a decade to get here, uh, it wears extremely well. There's none of the aspirational luxury connotations. Well, at least I don't think so yet. Um, it feels more honest uh, than a Rolex, you know. Um, and also something we should mention is that now you can get a five-year transferable guarantee with no registration or periodic maintenance uh, checks when you buy new. And I think Tudor are being very clever about selling their watches online. Uh, it's an intelligent move to combat the evils of the grey market. And in fact, this is one of the few brands that I would ever consider buying new because I think the value is just impeccable. I mean, um, do I even have to <laughs> mention its in-house movement and all the rest of it? I think the retail price, considering all these factors, is spot on. And lastly, another um, classic urban gentry cliche phrase of mine, it does absolutely qualify as a strap monster, despite the blue. Uh, the blues are strained enough to work well with most leather uh, NATO rubber um, strap combinations. It pairs extremely nicely with, sounds like I'm talking about wine, but it pairs very nicely with olive green, browns, blacks, greys, orange, even yellow, and naturally blue as well. So let's discuss negatives. Now, unfortunately, there were quite a few negatives. Now it is no secret that I have a very strong affection for the brand. However, one could say that uh, this Tudor is an example of yesterday's uh, left field choice of the purist becoming mainstream. As a Tudor fan from way before um, everyone jumped on them, has it become a bit of a cliche in watch circles? And now you have ambassadors, uh, which I've also discussed at great length, like David Beckham and um, Lady Gaga uh, championing the brand, it no longer being actually issued to elite combat divers anymore. Has the original Tudor luster worn off? I guess this is more questions for you guys to discuss in the comments, but please do let me know your opinions. Well, it depends. I would actually rather see a person wearing this than just another boring modern submariner. Well, they're not boring, they're amazing watches, but you know what I mean. Um, but that is all perception. What about the physical issues? Well, there is no loom in the bezel. Uh, I think Amiga are now fixing that with their new releases. I, I would have liked to see that. Uh, of course, we have the loom pip, but you know, let's see some loomed bezels, guys. Come on, especially at this price. And while it doesn't have any of the faux patina and stuff, the, the rivets, which are basically trying to mimic the classic uh, oyster bracelets, feels completely unnecessary. There is no actual practical uh, reason for them to be there. They're purely aesthetic reasons. And I really feel that Tudor missed the trick here. If you guys remember, I looked at a Paul Newman Daytona uh, donkeys years ago. In the riveted bracelets of that, uh, during that time, they had little springs in them. So they expanded almost like a stretchy bracelet. I'd love to see um, true to bring back something like that to even add to the comfort and that kind of leads on nicely to another uh, negative there's only three uh, spring bar adjustments there's no extension clasp uh, for a dive watch quite unheard of which is weird you even get it on very very economical watches it was a little bit of a pain to fit I'm kind of in between a, a link so um, it was either too tight or too loose and these three options didn't actually Get it right for me now we all vary so um, it, it might be absolutely fine for you but for me it was a bit tricky to properly size now if you don't like the snowflake hands which i completely understand um, you're not gonna like this in looking at it i realized that every time the snowflake hands were used they always work better with the matching square markers like the reference 7016 or for example the modern Pelagos, they complement the squared shapes. This combination of snowflake hands, but then 
triangles and circles from the Mercedes um, handed dials, you could say. Does it does it work? Does it, it's a bit of a mishmash. Perhaps it would have been better with the squared markers. Who knows? Go all the way instead of this kind of um, blending or confluence of styles. Now, you know I'm going to say this, but I do miss the Rose logo. For me, that connection to um, dear old England, it would have been nice to see. And I think if you're going to do something that is vintage inspired, why not have the vintage logo? Let the Pelagos, let the whatever modern divers are coming, let them have the shield and as any history buff or anglophile um, like me who grew up visiting hampton court palace on the weekend and uh, it's a charming touch and i just wish they would have included it another negative is it's not going to be easy or affordable to service compared to your eta and that is something i absolutely adore about pretty much every single tudor i've ever owned yeah actually every single Tudor I've owned, you know, and I've owned, uh, how many now, half a dozen, who knows. Whenever I had to service it, it was 200 odd dollars, perhaps a little more for a full movement service by any decent independent watchmaker. And of course there is an abundance of spare ETA parts and that's why it's so affordable. If you had to service this, you're gonna have to send it back to Tudor. A big issue for me and another reason why I absolutely adore my sub is the crown. I am not a fan of this crown. I think it's a little bit too flat. It's not the most ergonomic. Uh, while it is very sturdy, as I mentioned earlier, you cannot beat your typical Rolex style, the trip lock crown there. When you unscrew it and you pull it out, it's huge. It, you just grip it. It's a pleasure to wind this. Um, I'm so used to this now and the way the, the you know, the lack of crown guards don't make a jot of difference because they're rounded. So you just got a really good grip on it. It's so much easier to manipulate. And again, I, I suspect this is a foreign influence because this is not really anything like your typical Tudor and Rolex crowns. Kind of goes back to what I was saying about the bezel edge. While we're on the subject, these bezels are far easier to control. I would have loved to see a Mercedes hands version of this. I think it would have been a lot more fitting the markers. And I think there is enough differences in its overall design to stand apart. Yes, I can understand why they went snowflake. Of course it is uh, distinctive and, and unique to Tudor, but um, so is Mercedes hands. They belong to Tudor just as much. I mean, yes, you're always going to get people that erroneously say, oh, it's just a, a Rolex homage and because they just don't know how much history uh, the Tudor has, but um, that's their issue. <laughs> that's not your problem. Okay, last and by no means least is the strap. Now, they have a very beautifully made woven fabric, NATO hybrid, you could say. But historically, Tudor has always been supplied in bulk to their military buyers without any bracelet. In fact, the US Navy SEALs uh, used rubber straps and later on British NATO style straps. While the French came up with a very practical solution and a, a real stroke of genius, they would take um, this stretchy material from their parachute bags and cut it into straps and use them uh, the same way a NATO strap. So you'd, you'd thread it through, very, very secure, very comfortable, very practical, and of course, water resistant. I would have loved to see Tudor do something similar, or if you wanted to bring some historical accuracy and very similitude to the strap, I would have partnered with NDC, for example, the only company in the world that uses the genuine new old stock military issued uh, material from France to make their strap. Uh, it's the real McCoy. Uh, yes, there's a lot of imitations out there, but this is the, the real deal. But I understand these are available only in a limited amount. It uh, might have been an issue to supply um, God knows how many um, Shooter Black Bays they, they make now. But um, I just think that it would have been a great partnership because also this is a direct connection to its military uh, heritage. Uh, the Tudor Submariner has been supplied, and I'm talking numerically, in more quantities uh, than the Rolex, the famous mill sub, ever was. Um, so it's it's a bit weird that the mill sub is so revered when the Tudors 
a little bit kind of forgotten about. It's, anyway. Oh, and I guess I should say I do miss um, the drilled lug holes. If you're going to um, change out the straps, uh, it would have been a really welcomed addition to have drilled lug holes, uh, considering it is so compatible. It's a shame they didn't do it like on my subby. So in conclusion, it's um, a subtle but elegant watch, but don't let its uh, handsome um, styling fool you. It is absolutely capable of taking a beating, even more so than its um, military ancestors. However, I have to be truthful here. For me, um, you know, I'm not gonna pretend I loved it because everyone else does. It simply didn't click with me personally. Maybe that's because uh, I have my vintage sub here, but I know many will absolutely adore it uh, It will probably do everything my sub does for me and it is unequivocally pure class my vintage sub uh, it feels slightly less of a mishmash um, And I like that more direct link to its heritage whereas this is it feels a little bit more distant um, but it is its own thing. That is something it has more than this. So while the prices of vintage subs are absolutely skyrocketing, this is more accessible at the end of the day. The 58 is undeniably a great quality and um, a good value too, which is rare in luxury watches, let's, let's be honest. In many ways, Tudor is what Rolex used to be before it became a overpriced, well, distastefully overpriced status and aspirational uh, symbol. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared a video about designing my ultimate fantasy James Bond watch. And if Amiga was no longer to continue that partnership, I asked the audience, what would be a great brand to take their place? Well, you know what? I'm quite surprised not many of you guys said Tudor, because I think undoubtedly, it would be my first choice. It is a truly great do-it-all watch in that ultimate Bondian tradition of from tux to swimming pool and from adventure to just, you know, looking cool. And if you are looking for that do-it-all everyday piece, this is unequivocally it. And now it's blue, it does kind of remind me of the Brosnan era Seamaster a little bit. It's kind of going in that direction. It has that lovable versatility masculine charm, dive time bezel that makes divers so compelling. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Do let me know your thoughts. Uh, what do you think Tudor are getting right? What do you think they're getting wrong? How does it compare to Rolex now? Um, I'd love to hear feedback on this relationship. I find it absolutely fascinating. Uh, but yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to uh, like this video. It really does help, especially to support the channel. I don't ask for Patreon or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.